We love you! Hello and welcome to Tribe Talk, the Galway Hurling Podcast, with me, Patrick Early, and David Connors, where each week we'll discuss and divulge all the goings on in Galway Hurling. We'll be taking an in-depth look at the club scene and of course focusing on Intercounty. In this, Shane O'Neill's first year at the helm, all of which we'll do in the company of some special guests and former Galway greats. So do come along and join us on Tribe Talk, Galway's dedicated hurling podcast. Well, we didn't envisage having to conduct a post-mortem on the show this week, nor did we envisage having to having another game to preview, but such is hurling and such as Kilkenny and what they can do to you, that, that's the position we find ourselves in towards um, like days of old in, in, in many ways and that we were very good for long spells and then a minute of sloppiness or whatever you want to call it, and a minute of genius from, from Kilkenny as well, but sloppiness on our part um, turned the whole game on its head and here we are with uh, our Ireland quarter final coming up against Tipperary on Saturday and if we manage to get through that, we're we're staring down the barrel and with Limerick on the on the other end of it a week later. So we're still there, but the road to Liam McCarthy is certainly a, a, a bit more treacherous now, anyhow, than than what we would we would have liked, David. Um, definitely one one we left behind us, anyhow. That's for sure. Oh, definitely. It's a, it's a tough watch. Happened to rewatch it again um, today. Oh God, uh, I'm sure you did the same as well. You know, it's different being there, but there's probably other aspects that you would have missed while you were there as well that you might have got on telly, but and vice versa. But Jesus, yeah, no, I kind of a nightmare draw really. If you were if you were to choose between the two today, you would have definitely chosen Clare, despite their recent form, we'll say. But uh, um, I just think my biggest issue with the tip having face and tip is. We'll probably need to give a full 75 minute performance to beat Tip. Like, um, bodies are going to be drained, are going to be bruised and sore, we'll say. And um, then, then you have this Limerick juggernaut coming down the, the tracks just a week later. Um, that's my biggest issue with it. It's not the fact that I, I don't believe we can't be, or we can be, or we can't be Tip, should I say. I, I, I do think we can be Tip, but I, I do think it's a very close to a 50 50 game. But mm. um, what's coming down the track. You know, a few days later, say a week later, is it's it's frightening. You know, you'd you'd love to have the the, the, the two weeks rest for maybe an All Ireland final, or you know, to play them and you know fully focus on them. Like, whereas there, they sit back up now next Sunday, like, and they're they're they're, they're they appear to be absolutely flying. Like Waterford were accredited themselves yesterday; they threw absolutely everything at them. They they hit them with everything they could physically, and they still couldn't beat them. Like, so it's it's just. It's 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 become a whole lot more difficult, Patrick, hasn't it? Really, it's this that's the issue here now. It's just from having a a shot at an all, a, a realistic maybe shot at an All Ireland to you know do you say you have one now? You're kind of you're outside. You're definitely considered outsiders after the result at the weekend. Um, you touched on it there that it was in our grasp. Uh, it most certainly was. Um, you know efficiency rate in front of goal. I think I'm sure we'll we we'll talk about it down the the line there. Just just not good enough. Um. Left a lot of chances. Kikini popped it four, four goal chances maybe overall. Um, um, they took two. We had three goal chances, probably arguably three. We took zero. You know, probably a problem in the last few years for us as well. Actually, find in the back of the net. Um, so yeah, um, let's say we left it behind. But I suppose credit to Kikini, they deserve it too. Um, Richie Hogan, what an introduction. You know, seemed like a man possessed. I, I, you know, so many times he's been written off over the last few years and. You know, stood up again. He's he's a player that's given Galway in particular nightmares in the past. He's sometimes he looks like he come off he came off the bench before. I think it was at five pints he scored, nearly bet us by himself. Um, mm-hmm. Again at the weekend, pint size maestro made it happen. Got that got that beautiful little thing. He seems to use a, a slightly bigger hurl as well, doesn't he? He just kind of he had that extra a couple of inches to get in comparison to the fascination with the the smaller hurls we seem to have with the 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 hurlers these days. His hurl was that bit far, a bit bit longer, and he was able to reach out and get that beautiful flick up to. You know, take it away from me in a second touch to you know to to control its spin and then just you know facing away from the goal back of the net quality score. I, like if you, I suppose we we will probably do touch on it a bit further. But just if you said beforehand, if you're going to keep TJ Reid, uh, Colin Finlay, and Walter Walsh to one one from play between them, you'd have said, "Geez, we we have a great chance here." But no, 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 no. We sloppy in certain terms of conceding freeze in the first half to keep them in it and. You know, Fergal Horgan had a. Uh, I, I wouldn't be uh, hugely uh, complimentary towards his performance either. Some very, you know, for both sides now, I must say he wasn't 
some of his decisions were, you know, very left a lot to be desired. But you know, you have to beat the ref as well. <laughs> if if you feel he's going against you, yeah, we can't really can't really blame him for that much. Um, probably a few of our players misfired on the day as well. I'm sure we'll touch on that later. But uh, they didn't reach the heights they probably could have. Um, but yeah, no, all to do now, and you know, depressing enough kind of to uh, drive home at the weekend. As we know, we were chatting away and um, on the way, and you know, what 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 can what can you do now other than Face tip and nothing to get the juices flowing like facing them, I suppose, for a lot, for a lot of the county, particularly over around the east there. They'd love nothing more than to, to get to get one over on tip, and I'm sure tip will probably feel the same as well. Absolutely, yeah. And just to give a, a rundown, I suppose, on, on, on our plans for the week for the programme here, and we'll expect that we, sh- we should have another another um, podcast to release later on in the week. So we're going to just keep it to go with Kenny tonight, and I suppose give you give you our, our, our own sort of thoughts on, on the game because as we, as you mentioned there and you're dead right in saying it you know watching the game there live and then going back and watching it again on television um, it's actually amazing how different you see it you know mm. on both sides of things there's, there's a lot more in terms of shape and setup and that's I think you'll see obviously from um, when you're there in person but when you go back and watch it on the television there's kind of there, there's smaller details that you you, only, you, don't, you miss when you're there because you only have the the chance of seeing most things once, you know. So, um, mm. I suppose just just to give people that that how we saw the game from from being there, being one of the some of the well, I suppose we we thought we were lucky last week going to it. I don't know, it didn't feel lucky on the way home as as you mentioned, but um, that's the plan. And hopefully we'll we'll, we'll have a guest on for for the next show to chat a, more, a bit more about this game and especially to look forward to forward to the tip game. So, um, that's the plan anyhow. But as you as as you alluded to there, David, you know. In a winning position in a game that was very tight for, for for long periods, you know, seven all at the first water break, one up at half time, and then, you know, it was the third quarter really where they, I suppose, doing the damage is 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 one way of putting it. But we we didn't actually go with and actually score from play in that in that third quarter, which is amazingly. But um, you know, a concession, uh, a string of frees going going our way, and a couple of uh, the sideline was, was was put over in the third quarter as well, uh, if memory serves. Um, pushed four clear, and you know in in that position when we we had the tails up, and as you mentioned there, like you know you Dahi Dahi doing the the man marking job and fin, kind of Finley for the majority, and Joseph Cooney doing the same on TJ. And um, like I, I look looking back at today there today, and that was the only thing I wanted to focus on was those those two battles. Like you know, um, kind of Finley had one possession in the first half where he he won a ball in, in the corner and played it out. Um, and over it, and it was it was a turnover, and um, he also won an early free when Dahi just Dahi just caught him on the on the helmet, bat, bat, batting a ball. Um, that aside, he he literally did nothing. Um, TJ didn't touch a ball until the final quarter of the game, bare his frees, which were outstanding, and mm. we we want to talk about that he was unerring in fairness all, all night, he was outstanding often. But in open play, TJ didn't touch the ball until, um. He scored the second goal, and that was really the one that you know. Even after the first goal, you still talk all oh, we're in an all right position here. We're still hurling well, but to be hit with another one, um, forty-one seconds I made it from the time the first first ball hit the net to when the second hit the net, and like I don't know, it's just it was just sloppiness, I suppose, and not resetting properly. Um, mm. we'll 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 talk about the first one first, I suppose. It was, you know. Probably a mistake on Anna's part to come out off the line when there was it was a three on three, um in terms of our backs and the, and and their their forwards you know and the ball was only on the edge of the box, um so even though Hogan broke onto it, the cover was still probably there and I, I think you know at worst Garage could probably w- would have dragged Richie to the deck and conceded a penalty at the, at the very worst, um which you know and in saying that hindsight's great had had Anna come out and. Got to the ball and flicked it at the side. You'd be saying, "What, well, what, what a move by by the goalie in that, you know." So, and um, at the time, you know, obviously thought thought it was the right move to make, but just when he got out there, couldn't couldn't quite get it away, and you know, paid the price for it in the end. That's for sure. Um, and I suppose one thing that's probably overlooked as well, McInerney probably thought he would have had the power to, you know, kind of shirk Hogan maybe off the ball because we were kind of running in shoulder to shoulder. But Hogan is he's deceptively strong because he's such a, a low centre of gravity as well. You know what I mean? So. He's a little, he's a little tank there at times, so you're probably not going to push him off as too easy. But definitely uh, a mistake as well for me. And like I, I suppose it's only his second senior championship start. Like so, 
it's hard to be too critical. He's still learning the ropes and all that. But I think maybe, you know, a, a lot of keepers there, maybe more experienced ones, but he came out and taking ball, man, absolutely everything, you know what I mean? And, you know, better to be safe than sorry, really, you know, because when he, when he, when he got flicked around him, he, uh, he, he was in real, real bother. I suppose I'd have a bit of an issue with keepers actually coming off their line, you know, there didn't, like there was still ample cover there that he mightn't, he didn't probably need to come out either. Um, you know, we've still had bodies back, as, as you mentioned there, um, that may and may may have been able to deal with it. And, you know, if he's on his line, the, the Hogan still has to beat him. He's not going to be flicking it like that into the net anyway, because Aina will just take it down, you know, and, and clear it. But I suppose, you know, Aina had a, had a, had a good game other than that. Like, his, his puck outs were good, um, reasonably good. He had one laser puck out down to Johnny Cohen underneath the Hogan yeah, stand in the first half. Yeah, it was bullet like a real class restart. Um, Johnny Cohen, he drove it wide. Um, it was probably his, it would have been his third point of the half and you would probably would have rarely see Johnny Cohen score three points in a game, you know, because it's just not his role. It's just not the, probably his skill set. Um, it's kind of more of a, you know, a destroyer on midfield there and he can chip in with a pint or two well and good, but it's not really his his role. But no, it's, um, it's, it's a learning curve, I suppose, that probably management do see huge potential in Aina. Um, I suppose if you're a goalkeeper, he's what, 22, 23, 23, I think he's, he'd be about. So, you know, that's very, very young in goalkeeping terms. Like, you know, he's a, this, he's obviously massive, huge potential seed, and we'll say there in terms of the overall ability he can get to. Um, uh, just, just on the goal, it was class, really, wasn't it, from Hogan? You know, Gosh, just, yeah. just absolutely, just sheer class. Like, you know, it's, it's a, a kind of an iconic goal. I think someone... Uh, you know, you're, you're not a huge soccer man yourself, but they compared it to Dennis Burkamp. He done a kind of a, a pirouette there, and it was kind of similar to that before. Um, you know, in, in soccer, um, you know, even at that though, when you can see the one, you're still like, okay, right, we'll we'll react to this positively now. You know, I mean, we'll, you know, even at that stage, we we, we were so we look so good that you know, some lad should have maybe maybe taken a break for a second. You know, some lad feigns an injury down in the corner. You know. To lies down a couple of seconds, kills all the momentum. Like, you know, something Kilkenny have done for years when they're under pressure. Our top teams have said we kind of we restarted a bit quick. And as you touched on it there, I made it 40 seconds, you made it 41. So maybe my eyesight is off. Um, but yeah, long ball coming. You were you you just had a few thoughts we were discussing there on the ball as well. You you managed to see a replay from the canal in. So I let you talk through that because you're probably better to describe it because I actually missed it. So just in terms of Joseph Cooney's uh, position. Yeah, it was an interesting one because, you know, up to that, every 50-50 ball that had been between Joseph Cooney and TJ, Joseph Cooney had won it, or at the very least broken it for, for a goal meant to win it. You know, he, he was, at, up to that point, probably Galway's man of the match in my eyes anyhow, um, and still wasn't fed off it by the end. But just this just this ball, um, and it was only on this particular replay that I, that I noticed it was replay from high up in the canal stand, so look, looking down towards Hill 16, um, from a in, as puck out. Um, they start off about 35 yards out, we'll say, and with Richie Hogan and Dahi on, on, on their left as well. And TJ moves in towards goal. This is as play is, is developing now, just as Aina is hitting it out, and we'll say it's in the air or it's landing. Hmm. Joe Scooney goes to follow him, as obviously he should, but he was probably six, seven yards off him and was running with his back to the ball. And TJ turned to face the ball as Joseph was still running towards him to, get, to catch up to him. And as TJ turned, Killian Buckley hit the ball in and Joe Scooney still hadn't turned and didn't even know the ball was coming. So he was only reacting to TJ's movement. That's when he realised there was something something coming towards him, you know. Um, so that obviously gave TJ the upper hand. Um, and when TJ won it ahead of him, you know, and he, and Joe was probably that bit flat-footed, he was, all, he was always going to beat him. And in fairness, the, the finish was, was, was outstanding too. But it's just, I don't know, I... I thought myself, you know, looking at looking at some of our backs for the last quarter, I thought that there was there was a tiredness um about about some guys, you know, and just a small bit more laboured in, in, in the way they were attacking ball compared to pre previously or er, earlier in the game, you know, TJ got another handy ball and score um in front of Dahi, I think it was um a few minutes later, you know, that just that wasn't happening um earlier on in the game or during the game at all, you know. So you know, we didn't see changes in, in at at the back, and I just wonder, you know, would would you've been better served bringing on like an an, an Adrian two maybe earlier on, maybe at the water break in the half back line or somewhere thereabouts, or um, you know that you know the experience is obviously there and plenty of legs, you know, and um maybe, but you know, in saying that, 
at the third quarter we were in such a good place and we had dealt so comfortably with their their key threats, you know, Connie Finley um went off as did Walter. Walter went off even earlier than than Connor Finley, you know. Um and TJ hadn't had a sniff so it was very hard to change that sort of a formula as well. But just just mm. my own my own thoughts anyway, I thought I thought they did look a small bit so was mentally as opposed even more so than physically fatigued maybe in, in, in for those couple of minutes and certainly that that ball you know um like Joe Scunny was outstanding like but just that mm. one he got he got caught out there and was a small bit sloppy and switched off for ten or fifteen seconds and that's all it took you know and they 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 got the second goal and that made it two fifteen to twenty points um and in fairness responded very well to that you know we 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 struck the next three to to go ahead again um from there on. The puck outs is another thing we we'll move on to, you know, they won an awful lot of our, our, our longer puck outs in, in that final quarter. Um which, you know, obviously if you're winning puck outs you're 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 in charge of the you you have possession and you 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 make it happen from there. But um, you know, so obviously that that was, that was an important factor though, those two goals there. But in saying that still even at that point we were only what, four or five four or five to the good and as we mentioned, the likes of Walter, Colin Finley, TJ hadn't been involved in the game. So, had you said that earlier on in the week to us, you'd be saying mm. this is going to be comfortable for for Galway. You know, that's that's the the the, the main threat that they carry is, is those three guys in attack. You know, um, and and we'd all but I suppose negated them for 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 that period. So, how was the game so close? That's the the next question you have you have to ask even at that at that stage. And really, it was the the free count in in the first half and. I suppose our own our own um, misgivings in, in in front of in front of goal in terms of the the amount the amount of chances we missed. So a few stats a few stats done up here on that. Um, I suppose on, 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 in terms of conversion rate and o- overall stats, we scored twenty four points from forty two shots. I made it. Um, you know you could argue with one or two more. Maybe the likes of Conor Whelan's one that was half blocked in the second half. I didn't include that, we'll say, for example. So that equates to a 57% conversion rate. So in in those misses was 12 wides, two shots saved, um, two shots off the post, one dropped short, and one went out for a 65. So we scored 13 points from play, nine from freeze, one from a 65, and one from a sideline. Kikeni on the other half scored 220 from 30 shots. So that equates to a seventy three percent conversion rate. As you can see, streets ahead of us, um, six wides, two shots drop short, scored two eleven from play and nine frees. Um so we were comfortably ahead in terms of uh points scored from play and that in the first half and we'll talk about the the the, the, the free concession as probably suppose one of the, the main reasons as to why Kenny were so close at half time. Um you know, in the first half we we scored thirteen points from twenty one shots. So, including the, the eight misses were six wides, one drop short and one out for a 65. Scored eight points from play and five from freeze. Kikini scored 12 points from 15 shots which, with three wides. Only four from play and eight frees. Um, you know, and there, in essence, is the reason as to why they're, they're, they were so close. You know, we gave up an awful lot of cheap frees and haven't gone back and watched, watched the replay today. I couldn't argue with with the vast majority of, of those frees and parents, you know. That's for sure. Um, I suppose to, just on, I'll just step back into into Joseph there for a second. I suppose one thing, he, he mightn't be, you know, too used to mind in the house. You know what I mean? As the last defender, you know, in a, in a lot of instances, so it's kind of, you know, even if you're in the half back line, you can maybe switch off for a second or two. But when you're when you're the last man back there, you're kind of always have to be facing the ball regardless, and you know. Get into position, but I suppose it's it was you touched on it. There was one minor, you know, blip in a an otherwise outstanding performance. And once TJ got the ball in hand, there's just no stopping it. Like there isn't a defender in the country that's going to that's going to stop him finishing that. Um, what's he, he jinked one way and went the other, and then just shortened the stick and put it into the top corner. Um, just just on chances on, I did I did a couple of stats as well, just kind of for. Uh, paper this weekend. I made it now. Maybe you're you're different here, but in our last six attempts, we'll say you know um, we only scored a point from uh, last our last six shots. Whereas from Kinney, um, they had from what was it their last eight shots? I made it that their final eight shots they had they scored two six from. So that'll tell you towards the la- the closing stages. You know who finished the stronger there. Um, <clears throat> you know what really defined the game for a finish, and you know what 
you know, the winning and losing of it really. We were a bit, you know, shot by shots that maybe you wouldn't expect us to miss. Um, like Joe's free, maybe was another one that uh, another another day, you know, he would have nailed. He, he nails him ninety five percent of the time. It was just one of those, and even you know the one that came off the post as well. Another time, and even sideline, he's nearly he's nearly a favourite now to, to convert those. He probably is a favourite to convert those anywhere forty five fifty yards from the goal. Um, just on just just on our accuracy, though, yeah, it's it's very very disappointing. You know, um, it's it, it's hard to tell. Like we're you know, the forwards had to work so hard, maybe, you know, that when you actually do get the ball, then, you know, when you're only playing, you know, a two-man inside line, it becomes that bit harder, you know, you know, to have the energy to actually get your shots away. You know, it's trying to get that extra yard of room that you might, you might found a bit easier to come by um, early doors. I don't know, maybe maybe there's something in that, maybe you touched on fatigue there. I, I could definitely see you being an element. And Kikini got great joy out of their bench as well. I thought Blanchfield, when he came on, he was good. He was lively. There was a, who, who else did they bring on? I don't know, did Richie Reid have a great game now when he came on? But I, I don't recall him picking up. But they, they, they were very defensively resolute towards the end. And once once they kind of, you know, smelt a bit of blood at all, like, we didn't put them away. We, we had chances to put them away. And we didn't do it. Like, you know, I, I really, I, I would go back to maybe, firstly, I, I, it's probably very critical on Joe, but I would definitely tap that point over the bar, you know, for the 21 yard free. Um, I know Shane O'Neill said that he has license to do it, but I still think that it was the type of game where you want to keep the edge there. And, you know, maybe he felt for me a lot more confidence maybe than, than I would as a player or something like that. And he said to go for it, but I just don't know. I think, I think, I think we kind of discussed it afterwards and I think we were both in agreement that we probably, our message to him would be, would be to throw it over the bar and see, because Kilkenny at the time were finding it very hard to create scoring chances. I think there was a, the initial period there in, at the beginning of the first half, I think they had, they had, after TJ's free, I think they'd only four or five shots in about 15 minutes. Like, so it's, you know, we were really breaking up everything back there. Like every, every ball that came in, even when we, we stood off them for the sharp puck outs, we'd say we were still able to win the second ball, even, you know, even break a ball, get a turnover, win a free, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, maybe that one. And Jason Flynn, and, but just to finally, just to conclude the just, I think if you're going to go for it as well, you maybe go a bit higher, um, just because when, when you get the stick up, it could like, literally fly over the bar anyway, or fly out for 65. When it goes low, it's a bit easier to kind of deal with and get your body behind and, you know, take the sting out of it. But I'm not, I'm not anyone to tell Joe how to take freeze, but that's what, that's what I would, would have thought maybe, but other than that, like on Joe's performance, he was he was exceptional. Like he was he was he was my man of the match. You touched on Joe Sakoni there. He was definitely my man of the match. And when when Gary in the ascendancy, he was the one probably more the most driving it forward. And uh, I suppose we should we should definitely touch on that exquisite pass to Joseph for the the sideline, <laughs> um, like full reach into the hand, going full flight, just brilliant. Like uh, a lot of players wouldn't have even seen that. Never mind have the ability to execute it. Uh, you know, just just take one step back and you know just. Flick it straight into a lead, going full pace, you know, just perfectly timed. Um, uh, just moving on, then to, I suppose, just one of our other chances, Jason Flynn's goal, goal chance. Oh, geez, like an inter county forward, I don't want to be too critical, but you, you have to put them away. Like, you just you just have to put them away. Or, you know, like I know people were saying, oh, and Murphy made the stop, but from both our vantage point, it looked like it was going wide anyway, and Murphy actually stopped it outside the net. You know, we were probably lucky to even get a 65 out of it at that point. But it just, Jason had all the hard work done. And, you know, you just, you back most inter-county forwards to finish that off there. You know, even, he had a bit of time even to compose himself, pick a spot. And just, he didn't seem to make quite the right contact with it. Maybe, I don't know what part of the hurl it came off with, but it didn't seem to come off cleanly. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I was just a bit disappointed, I suppose. Cause the only other goal chance, if you were being very, it would be Conkenna is the one that it came back, came back off the crossbar from Canning sideline and it fell to him and he just managed to flick it wide. But it was a split second thing. It was probably only a half chance and you'd be you'd be very, very critical on him if you were to, to complain for that. But, you know, you would definitely expect maybe to to take Jason's one. And I think, I think I don't know, but Jason's one, what kind of complexion would have left on the scoreboard? I, I don't know, did I do it? Would have made there, it. But, it would have made it one sixteen to fourteen had it gone in. So okay. score the result in sixty five, which made it seventeen fourteen. But you know the the importance of a goal, and you're only a couple of minutes away from water break as well at that stage. You know, so mm. if you're going in, maybe one sixteen, one seventeen to fourteen up. You know, it's it's a different, different I suppose complexion of the score, and obviously, and then the the concession of a goal a couple of minutes later, maybe mm. it doesn't it doesn't do the same damage. You know, but look, you know, you 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 can't speculate about that. But yeah. I, a goal in a game like that too, you know, it just it's it's worth an awful lot. Like when chances weren't that that plentiful, you know, 
Um, yeah, like we weren't, we didn't create that many chances. You know, can Ken had a half chance mm-hmm. um, in the first step, but it wasn't. It was a good, a good defender in fairness by Tommy Walsh shoved, shoved him out the side and made the angle difficult for him. Yeah. Um, and we got a 65 out of it, which Joe actually, he actually missed that one. But the one the second half, the Flynn one was definitely you know, the, the the best chance of the game, certainly but, but for, from, from our point of view. And then took the wall on brilliantly and bet Hugh Lawler at ease and was away from him and didn't really have to worry about a hook or anything. And, you know, went to beat Murphy at the near post and, you know, as you say, didn't get the, the right contact on it. So seemed to come off the kind of the, the top top edge of the hurl more so than the, than the centre sensor of the bus, you know. And, and yeah, I think, you know, we were we were lucky in actually to get 65 out of it, as you mentioned. So, mm-hmm. Got a point from it at least, but you know, a goal would have been worth an awful lot at that stage, especially with with what was to come, you know. Um I suppose another and you know, there was there were there were, there were points, efforts maybe that we where we made the wrong decision, you know. Connor Connor Cooney won a great ball in the first half and had a man outside but chose to shoot over the shoulder without really having a look at the post, you know, and went wasn't wasn't far wide now, but still the better option was to lay it off outside him, you know, and just different little little things like that, you know, in, in, in a game, particularly against Kilkenny, you know, all these chances they all add up, you know. Mm. Um you can you can never have enough of a lead against Kilkenny and as as we proved, you know, five points wasn't enough for us. Um, you know, so look to lessons learned anyhow, you know, that's for sure. And you know, the the tip game will be different in, in, in that regard too, and that you know it'll be probably be more open and maybe less less physical certainly in terms of what 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 tip we're going to bring to a compared to Kilkenny because I thought Kilkenny were excellent in that regard. I thought we were very good in that regard too. You know, I wouldn't you know, we spoke last week in the preview about us having to match them in that regard and we certainly did, I thought, you know. Mm. Um it wasn't like we were out muscled or bullied or any of that. But you know, they're definitely they're definitely a team a, a team on the up, you know, you, 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 you didn't you weren't so sure last week talking about them but um definitely I think in their impact off the bench, as you mentioned, it was very good. And Ni- Niall Brazel came on for a championship table and set up Martin Keown for a- an important score later on. Later on. Mm. Um, even um, you know, new guys that came into the team, as they so often do with Kenny, you know, they can make such an impact. Like Connor Brown scored two points. Um, you know, we've mentioned Tommy Walsh did a, did a fairly all right, decent job on on, on Ken Cannon, certainly compared to what 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 he um achieved against Wexford. You know. Um, so all that adds up, and in fairness, Cody got it spot on. But like you, our our, our bench came on and made an impact too, you know. And like Davy Work was outstanding during his cameo, and Jason got a great point. And sure, had he got the goal, we, we we mightn't be having this conversation at all, you know. Mm. But certainly made, made an impact when he came in, like which which is very positive. Um, and and Hart as well made an awful difference at half time. That own, own Cody had caused an awful lot of problems uh, in the first half down that left flank. They had a, a lot of joy. Mm. Himself and uh, Martin Keown, um, just touched on it there. You know, Cody was fouled three times in the first half for three for three scores, and scored a point himself. And Martin Keown on puckouts was excellent. He won five puckouts in the first half alone, and three Kilkenny puckouts in two two of hours. So you know that's and scored a point in, in each half as well. So that's a huge impact from 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 those two boys, especially in the first half. You know, um, but. And as I mentioned, Fuckouts, I suppose that's an, an, another, I suppose it brings us on to the Galway setup and, you know, a, a big change in, in what we had seen from, from Wexford, you know, went away from a, a lot of what served them very well um, against Wexford. And it was obviously with Kenny in mind, you know, and that Parik set back as, as as a sweeper and, you know, it meant we had, we started off with a two-man full forward line of um, Concanon and, and Whelan as, as we did for much of the Wexford game. You had Niall Burke playing out at 12, um, and then you either had kind of Joe or Cahill at centre forward, and one as a third, as a, as a, the other midfielder would say, you know, that kind of changed uh, for, for much the first half, you know. But um, the decision to, to, to play a park as a sweeper, um, not one that I think any of us envisaged, to be fair. Um, you know, and you, you, you said to me, you, you heard TJ roar and about it that you know they're playing a sweeper they're playing a sweeper after a couple of minutes do you think that was him given you know the call that geez, these boys are these boys are afraid of us like that's that they've given us an edge here already yeah it's it's hard to tell from you know when you can't see his facial reaction but there's almost I, I, I don't know You could, could you read it as it was being disparaging towards Galway and trying to you know say 
geez, we've got the mental, we've got the upper hand here, you know, or give them a small bit of a mental edge, or was it the fact he was just being, you know, uh, probably an astute leader on the field and telling the lads coming out with position from the back to, to watch where they're driving it. You, you could go either way. It was hard to tell, but he definitely got the message across loud and clear four or five times. So they're, they're playing a sweeper, they're playing a sweeper. This is kind of a, you know, this is it's it's not something, you touched, you said it there, it's it's not something any of us expected. We we expected pretty much a very orthodox kind of Galway set up. It's, it's not too often, we like in the, I, I don't ever recall us setting up with a, an out and out sweeper, you know, f- from the outside. It's normally we're, we're left with the spare defender, especially under the kind of Dunahoo era, like, you know, you'd have a heart left back there as a, a spare defender and he'd be mopping up ball. But for us to withdraw and leave them an extra man, it was a, it's an interesting call. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Like some would say, would point to the the, the scoring chances Kilkenny, the, how few scoring chances Kilkenny actually created. But I don't know. Are you are you, are you wasting with Paul right there? Does it leave? Does it leave like a head of a a job like from your forwards? Then they have to work so bloody hard, you know, to to kind of cover the gaps. And we coughed up so much possession from sharp puckouts that that give you know Kilkenny. I think they won every sharp puck out, didn't they? That they went with, and they yeah. the, the majority of them were out there to the right hand flank at the start, and that's kind of where they broke. And Wheeler and Cannon had to to cut across to kind of close the gap, but often it was delivered even before they got anywhere near them. Um, I, do, I, I don't know. I, I'm not particularly sold on the idea. I would have I would have personally liked us to kind of like I'm far off the technician, you know, Shane O'Neill or any of these lads, Aaron, and trust me, I don't ever put myself anywhere near them. Or I wouldn't have any any. But that's an any, intermediate any. store. They, you had them for fairly fairly good championship. <laughs> now. Oh yeah, yeah, that was all uh, tactics, tactics, and stuff. They, they got them <laughs> over the line. Um, but no. Uh, just I, I don't know. I I thought like when you you perform so well against Wexford. With, with that kind of setup, that you might to leave it, and then if you if you're actually under pressure, to kind of tinker tinker with it. Then, um, truth be told, Powerick probably for that for later on wasn't really involved. You know, when Kenny Kenny were on the rise there, you know, for the two goals, was he in shot for a lot of the pitcher? Was he? You know what I mean? Was you know was was the sweeper role? You know, where was the sweeper there for really going to be for going to be ultra critical and things and how 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 things played out? You know. Where what where was where was Porrick? Where was the extra man? How was Joseph so isolated inside? Like how was Richie Hogan and that, that and like Richie Hogan's touch to take down the ball even to buy himself a bit of space for the goal? Um, I don't know. What did you? Did, would you? Were you? Did, were you happy with the sweeper? Did you? Did you like to see it or did you think it worked? Well, I thought he hit plenty of ball, like you know, and equally Killian Murphy did so at the other end. So I wouldn't say necessarily cost us um, defensively I think it's certainly it's obviously going to help you some, to some degree but I just in, in that, that sector but I just what, what my biggest issue was that what, what I felt it deprived us of up the other end because I felt that Park and Johnny Cohen had been such a good partnership in in the Wexford game and so good together and you know you had Park as the real sort of ball player of the duo and the link man, and he was excellent at it. And I felt our the quality of ball maybe delivered to our attack suffered as a result of him not being there. You know, um, he hit in a lot and offered a good, clever diagonal sort of balls for the two man inside line. You know, um, in that Wexford game, I thought I felt we missed that. Um, and also as a result of him being back the field, you know, we had Cahill more so than Joe from most of playing deeper. You know. Um, and Cahill was Cahill was very quiet and too quiet for 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 a player of that caliber. You, you need him more involved. Like he got his point early on and should have had another one when he, when he he was judged to have taken the ball out over the line, which mm. I didn't. I certainly didn't 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 think he did. You know, but too many times he was getting on ball and he wasn't. He was he was nowhere near even his own scoring range, which is which as we know he can, he can score from his own sixty five comfortably, but. In fairness, you have to give Kilkenny credit in that regard too, and that you know Parik Walsh was excellent, and when he did get a ball, you know he was afforded nothing like the kind of space he got last last year in Northern Park too. So they deserve credit for that. But certainly, I'd I'd prefer to see him in that half hour line. You know, I know I know that him being midfield worked very well for for Haskra um this year, and was he was hugely effective in that. But I think you know we're we're not badly stuck in 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 that sector. At, at at the with with the Galway set up, and I think we need him as you know, as more more of a score, more of a of a threat in that regard that can pop up with the three, four, five points from play and try get one ball in, in a bit more space where he can run at you and try hurt you, you know. And um, so that was kind of where I felt we 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 were lacking, 
because of having the sweeper, you know. Um, and equally, as I mentioned, you know, Killian Buckley is well, well, well used to playing that role too, and is very good at it. And he was, you know, play, he did hurt very well. Like, so I don't know, do we really gain a lot out of it? Because, you know, Dahi and Joseph Cooney, it wasn't down to Park Manion that they won their battles against um, Colin and TJ for the 55 minutes or so. You know, it was purely off, off their own bats and how, how well they played. And um, like the 50 50 balls, you know, they were 50 50 balls. They weren't. 70 30 because we had a two on one, they were they were all one on one, and mm. you know, maybe maybe Park was there to pick up a few of the breaks, but you know, I, I, I felt that they they won't they would have won that battle comfortably with or with or without Park there. So that was what I what I kind of I felt about it. It was more so what we what we lost further up the field rather than it being you know, um, a problem back back at the back, you know, but. Um, like and as a result, you know, having of having the extra man at the back, I mean, Kilkenny obviously did so at the other end, and you know, it meant that they could they, they went went short with the vast majority of their puck outs. You know, we have stats to come up here again on, on the on the puck out totals. You know, Galway was one sixteen from twenty seven puck outs, which equates to retaining the ball fifty fifty nine percent of of your own puck outs. So they went long with twenty two, um, and one eleven. So that's fifty percent. And five, five from five on on the short ones, as you'd expect. Um, Kilkenny one twenty five from thirty six walkouts, which is sixty nine percent, so ten ten more than Galway. Um, only went long on seventeen of their walkouts, despite having nine more than nine more walkouts that restarts than, than Galway. Went long for seventeen and once only won six of them, which is thirty five percent. Um. And won nineteen from nineteen when they went short. Now I know we won a couple of turnovers, um, in the first half as well, which led to scores, which was obviously fantastic from our forwards. But it's the it's the stat that the, they only won six from seventeen long fuckouts that sticks out for me. In that you know, had we forced them to go along more often, when we're having such joy, like that's only that's only a re- ball retention percentage of thirty five percent, you know, um, that's a huge that's huge in a game like that, you know, and. How how good our halfback then we're doing, and again that's not really down to that wasn't down to Park Manion. He wasn't overly involved on puck outs either. That was more so the halfback line and the the midfield in front of them. You know, um, that's another stat that jumps out for me, and that we 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 gave them possession too easily from their own puck out, and you know they still launched a lot of fifty fifties off that, but there was other times where they, they did work scores from it and 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 that. So, um, again just another another one that, you know, just didn't I. Made me feel that maybe we should probably sweep, or maybe what maybe wasn't our best way of, of approaching the game, you know. Um, but in terms of in terms of our own our own success, you know, 50 percent on our own long puck outs is not bad. You'd like it a small bit higher, but certainly breaking even isn't isn't the worst thing in the world, you know. And um, and Conor Cooney was the main man in that regard for Galway. He won he won four of four of the four puck outs and another one, which we hit short was hit long thereafter and he, he won that as well so very important in, in that regard for Galway and again didn't didn't get on the score she had two shots that you know he certainly himself would have would, would, would have liked and expected to put over maybe but um his departure um in the final quarter Galway went on to the, the last six of their nine puck outs in the in, in the, that final quarter and um, he was off the field for most of that and they, they all they all went long so I don't know. Was would you, that that was that a factor? Certainly, he was. You know, he won a couple of clean, and another, another few he broke to himself, and he, he won on the ground. So certainly, he was he was hugely effective for Galway in, in that regard. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's probably he does a lot of unheralded work, doesn't he? Really, you know, it's just it's kind of underrated. You wouldn't you wouldn't see what he's doing. We touched on it. We touched on this in the last couple of games as well. Um, confidence does appear to be a small bit low for him at the moment, though, in terms of shooting. Um, you know, it kind of kind of snatches at it a little, and even there was a, probably a chance on to have a shot. And he popped it back to Jason, which is which which ended up in a score. But you know, another time, uh, fully fully uh, Connor Coney in full flow, should I say, would have would have taken that on himself and more than likely nailed it as well. Um, you know, um, just just on that, then I suppose in terms of puck outs, we probably were lacking a small bit in terms of a ball winner like. Uh, we we did we did break even from them, but towards the end we just couldn't seem to gather anything that was going in long or high. 
Um, Porrick Walsh came out with a few. I think Tommy Walsh came out with a couple as well. You know, just they were they seem to just be able to mop up everything. I think the the final ten minutes of play, if you include the four minutes of injury time, say six minutes remaining, I don't think we scored. Um, I don't think we scored at all. So you know, that's that's a long period of time there when the game was in the mental pot, not to actually come up with a score or you know with a couple of chances all right that we didn't take, but. You know that would have been that would have been a score hit there might have really set us on our way a bit of confidence. David Burke now we must say came on and he did he did really add to it and he was a bit of a calm and presence. You know it was his introduction that kind of turned it round after we just fallen behind. Uh, mm-hmm. He wasn't long on the feet afterwards and he he nabbed two points. But other than him, we didn't look like we'd any real score interest at all. Um, for for the for the final few minutes, I thought I thought Jesus, we were just. You know, we seem to be just out on our feet here. And maybe, you know, you touched on maybe bringing on Adrian Toohey a, a bit earlier. Maybe another maybe another player in attack as well might have, might have done us any harm. Personally, I would have thought, like, I would have thought Cahill Mennion's day was kind of, was done at that point. He, you know, he'd, he'd emptied the tank maybe in terms of work weight. He had a tough day on Porrick Walsh. So why not try and, you know, bring on someone a bit, someone a bit different there? Or maybe, you know... Maybe bring Connor Connor Whedon closer to goal. I think we, we had you have mentioned here on the notes because towards the end I thought he was far too far away from goal for when we needed a couple of scores. And Connor Connor Whedon in my eyes does his best work when he's he's in around the 21, 30 yards from goal and you know he just he can win his own possession. We didn't we didn't feed him with enough ball um at all. In fairness to Connor Delaney, now you you mentioned that he done a, he done a, he done a fine job on him, but and he seemed to follow him everywhere, didn't he? Really, you know, no matter what anyway, he went yeah. the field. Yeah. So it's not something you would you would like you you want to see where I I personally don't want to see Whelan out in the forty five yard line or out around midfield. It's just not it's not where his strengths are in my eyes anyway. Maybe maybe the lads can see something different that I don't. But you just want him near. He's I think pound for pound maybe with Kincaid and they're probably our biggest goal threats out anyway. Like they're Definitely. most likely to to never goal if they get the chance in there. But um, yeah, he didn't. He, he had no. Goal chance or any, he had no positions really that close to goal other than the one you mentioned where he was stood up in the first half and he kind of fumbled it and you know the chance was gone then um, a piece of good defending in fairness. Um, just on the other end, I suppose one patch I will ch- chat about what did you make of maybe say Garage at wing back? For me, I, I don't think it works to be honest with you. I think he's better centrally. I think if you're if you're going to play Garage McInerney, I would prefer him to either to see him at six or three. I know that he's three nailed down, so that's the thing. I I just don't know if out the wing kind of suits him. Um, I think he I think he had a I think he had a, he struggled pretty much. You know, he was on Martin Keown as well. Kind of he had a good game. He never a crucial point towards the end as well. Um, I I just I just don't know. Um. Maybe maybe selection there was maybe to protect Loftus a small bit, but it just it just didn't work either. Um, Loftus had a, had a difficult afternoon. There's no point saying otherwise. I suppose it was kind of a an experimental, you know, a role from where we were we were kind of impressed with him against Wexford and Paul Morris. But someone like Owen Cody is a completely different proposition, you know, and an out and out natural inside forward was a you know a willing runner and pacey as well. So. You know, Loftus might have had the speed on someone like Paul Morris, but Cody probably had the legs in him. And you know, at first to Loftus, it was it was a difficult afternoon. You know, a lot of people will have have their struggles on own Cody, and he's a fine hurler out around. I personally think out around the middle sector, and he's he's a good link man. But I I, I don't know what cornerback we were. We were very quick to praise him against Wexford, and maybe maybe it was a bit rash. You, you know, I I just I I don't see him playing any any part in that particular position in the future. Um. Maybe I'm wrong. Now, maybe maybe there's something they see there. But what what did you think? Maybe and I suppose the other kind of experimental change would have been Niall Burke. Um, I know he'd he'd probably a shooing goal other than the cynical foul by Hugh Lawler, um, where he pulled back his hurl where he's bearing on down. But maybe maybe should maybe should let the hurl go and try and kick to the net or you know you know he had his advantage there anyway at that point or why not? Like you know I'd probably dropped it and you know said it was pulled off me or something like that. If you're wanting mm. to be ultra critical, but I don't know did that work either. Um. Other than the great catch, maybe he he struggled to make a real impact. I know he he was important there for one turn or for where they won a free when um when the Kilkenny defenders were bursting out after a sharp puck up. But by and large, he he probably didn't justify the starting spot. Um, probably we got a bit more out of Jason Flynn when he when he did come onto the field. But it's it's it, it's a worry, you know. You'd like to see a bit more form for someone like Niall Burke there. He's you know he's bags of potential, we'll say, but just. You know, uh, he never seems to be able to nail down the starting spot, and you know it's 
Scott, there's a spot up there for grabs for Leds probably haven't shown the best of form and it's it's wide open and we're probably not 100% sure in our best team either which is we're going into probably an all-earning quarter-final now and we're, we're not 100% set either which is a which is another worry about this but you know we'll, we'll touch on the tip game maybe later on in the week but yeah what did you think of we'll probably score through the probably the big talking points maybe changes there would have been Loftus would say McInerney and maybe Niall Burke because we've touched on the other the sweeper yeah well I, I just felt all week I felt that Loftus in a game like this the physicality is what I worried about you know and it's not mm-hmm. even I did, I don't worry about his defensive capabilities or his ability to attack the ball or any of that it's just even on an own Cody, who's he's a couple of years younger than than, than Loftus, you know, um, he's a guy who's gotten an awful lot bigger in the last year or two, and doesn't look like a, a lad in his first start of championship season, just in terms of build and physicality and that, you know. So, in fairness to, to, to Loftus, you know, he was he was always he was always willing to attack the wall, which is which which is a great sign to see in a defender, but. Well, he was just trying to get the little edge by maybe a little tug here and there and that sort of thing. And he got caught out a couple of times. He gave away three frees in the first half. And um, same as Conor Coney, and they were they were our our, our um our worst defenders in that regard. Um, you know, and he was just that's just because he was compensating for not having the physicality to deal with Cody. Like you know, and there's there's other games now where I wouldn't have any problem with Loftus start and cornerback as we mentioned. He was very good against Wexford. Um. On Paul Morris, who was more of just an all round kind of hurler rather than you know, he doesn't doesn't bring that sort of physicality to it. That just just just, just on that though, I, I suppose just just on that Paul Morris, there's not too many more matchups though. You'd really, you'd really could be using them against like say tips inside line probably would cause him a bit of bother as well. And Limericks definitely would in terms of Casey and Graham Graham McKay if he was to if he was to shadow one of them so. I just don't know. I don't want to be. I don't want to be too critical of him either. Like, but like, I think his biggest strength is is further out the field. You know, maybe around the middle third there. If you wanted to, he kind of a, he's a good link man. If nothing else, you know, and he uses the ball so so well. Um, that would be my thoughts on it. Maybe you're different. Maybe you think he could be. Would do, do you see him being used against a tipper Limerick? Because I I definitely don't. I know. No, I, I just I just don't think at, at his current physical development stage, he's just he's just not. All. Up to up to that level when it, with the way the way the game's gone now, um as we said like Paul Morris was a different proposition like and even against a Cork maybe if there was a like a Jack Connor in the corner or something like that you know he he could probably he, he could certainly um play play his own game there and and, and get get one up on, on the likes of him but as yeah you're you're right in what you're saying as you guys most other full forward lines you know they'll just have that edge on him and and it's just something that. You have to develop, and it's easier for their lads to do it than than than, than others. You know, it looks like the likes of Conor Whelan, how you know there's plenty of work involved in putting on the the size and that as what he did. But some lads are just genetically, it's just easier to do it. And um, so I'm sure that's probably probably half the issue for for Loftus in that in that you know. Um, but and Garrow's outside him as well. You know, that was the flank where Kenny had most their joy in the first half when you know it wasn't working down the central channel and. You know, Walter and John Donnelly weren't having much joy over the far side. And, you know, you have to give Shane Cooney in particular, I think, had an outstanding mm-hmm. game. And Walter does, deserves an awful lot of credit for that for, for that role and shutting him down. Um, and Finton as well, particularly in the first half, he, he, he had a very good game. Um, but it was down that left side where, where they had most of their joy in the first half, I felt, anyhow. Um, I know I was probably Keown's ability to, to drag Garage out of position and further down the field than maybe he, he'd like and that, you know... Um, and it leaves you with, with decisions to make. Do I fully go gung ho and follow this ladder? Do I hold back a small bit? And then, if you only hold back a couple of years, you know you're in no man's land. So, these are the sort of decisions and the the di- how different it is from playing full back or centre back to, you know, wing back. We'll say maybe if you're, if you're centre back and the your centre forward is moving out the field, you you call your midfielders and you you get them to come mm. if, you, if you go so far. Whereas Maybe you don't have that option, and it went on, on a wing back. It's up to you to start it out, you know. Um, so certainly, I think Keown had, had success in him in that regard, and it's probably just like Garage hasn't played hasn't played wing back really since what twenty sixteen. That's really what he what he, he that was in his first season really he he, he played wing back, you know. Um, it's a long time to be out of that sort of position when there is such a difference between six and five or three and five, you know. Um, so. You know, even for even for the tip game now, we're not going to look into it too much tonight. But 
if there's, there's a there's matchups there where maybe you, you, you it would work, you know, better in the, in the likes of I don't know, maybe a Dan McC- McCormick or something like that, mm. you know, um, in terms of f- the matchup, you know, physicality in that regard, and you know, McCormick wouldn't be the the quickest by all means. Is hu- certainly hugely effective for Tip, you know. Maybe you could work it that way, but certainly I think Keown played played his game very well and did an awful lot of running, an awful lot of moving, and certainly caused caused Garage problems in the, in that regard, you know. Um, and as for as for Nile up the other end, you know. Yeah, the the catch fairness and yeah, when you see it in the replay too, it was a brilliant day. Mm. Um and, you know, did did the right thing. He took him on and Lawler Lawler grabbed the hurl and, you know, he, he got the pass away to Concannon, but just as the pass went, of course he, he he blew the whistle and we got we got the free, which, you know, point felt like a bit of a loss really on, on that play, you know, just with such a good opportunity. Um and just interesting on that, I um Alan Kelly messaged me this evening. I was ta- I was talking to him um about about that because I was just no more than every other goal person in the county was critical as to why Hugh Lawler didn't get a yellow card because for me it was a, it was a professional foul. It was cynical, you know, in what he did, um, and it was a blatant yellow card for me. But Alan was saying that because it's a it's a pull hold in the hurl, um, it's deemed a, t- a taking offence. And it doesn't matter whether it's Conor Cooney's one in the first half on Hugh Lawler 50 yards out from goal or it's just outside the box denying a certain goal like like, like Hugh Lawler's was in Nyberg. It's a ticking offence. Um, and he says, you know, he actually he made the right call, frustrating and all as it is and cynical and all as it is. Like I asked, is there is there a rule for, you know, a professional foul? Is, is a professional foul a yellow card? He said, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. There's no sort of... Um, precedence for saying that was a professional foul over just a, a normal ho- holding the hurl, you know. So I suppose it, it it comes down to the the cuteness side of it, and that Lawler had he had he wrestled him to the ground, he would have got his yellow card. But he he was cute enough to to hold the hurl and just make no mistake, he probably knew well what he was at, and he knew he knew himself maybe that it was it, 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 that was only a takeable offence, you know. And, and the cuteness of it, I suppose you would. You, you certainly, you know, you, those kids, the, the cleaners, they would have that down to a T, like, you know. Um, so just an, an, an interesting one because, yeah, no more, no but more than myself. Yeah, but that's, the, it's, that's just frankly ridiculous though, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you, you, all you listeners out there, you hear that next year, from now on, you grab the hurl on the, if you're, if you're playing in championship next year, be sure to grab the hurl and pull it back and all you can do is get a ticket if there's a lead bearing down and go We'll have a fierce cynical goal with championship next year anyway, because if that like that's that's just farcical, farcical rule. Like that's something Please. like this is this isn't a new occurrence. Like Hurling has gone it's been cynical now for maybe you know, overly cynical for maybe three or four years. And I would have been avid against black card or whatever, I would have just said, No, there's never any need for it, or you know, we'll just play the game as it is like but I, I like when you're not going to even get booked for it in a situation like that. It just boggles the mind. It just, yeah. you know, I and I, I realize I'm not blaming the ref, and I probably was without checking the rules. And it's good to hear it explained. Not blaming <laughs> it definitely was because, <laughs> because because he's constrained so by those rules. But those yeah. rules have to be looked at because you know, like you can't possibly like it's 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 a foul if you drop your hurl as well isn't it like it's mm-hmm. you know, like if you purposely drop your hurl it's a foul so you can't actually let go of the hurl with your bearing down and go all sir like what a, what a ridiculous loophole there that would be you know if <laughs> just so if there's any teams out there next year you know what to do for let it bearing down and grab him by the hurl and don't let go and if he drops it complain so he does you know I mean? so, yeah so like maybe maybe in reality maybe Hugh Lawler was, was unlucky not to get a free out for it like you know if yeah. Nile dropped his hurl yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Nile Burke let go of the hurl did he did he let go of it no he didn't but I'm no. saying I had he you yeah. know and as you say gone yeah, to yeah. as you said you know Hugh, Hugh might be looking for a free out. <laughs> that's Jesus, yeah. That's uh, that's yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's, 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 that's interesting. That's interesting. That's good. That's that's at least good to know the point of the the, the matter, like or the crux of the argument. So without being being too harsh, because Fergal Horrigan got a bit of a bashing online, and I happen to I happen to maybe wade in a small bit on it. But in fairness to him, he's just <laughs> abiding by the rules. You can't really, you can't really blame him, and you know, uh, in that instance. But you still a advantage though. 
<laughs> well, he definitely could, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He could, and he, he blew five seconds early as well for a finish. If we yeah. want to really hammer him as well, so but we we won't touch on that. But that, that, that's something that definitely needs to be tied up, like in terms of the rules and the GE and all. Because I even think Henry and Donal Oak were, were chatting about it afterwards, and they were they were adamant as well that there seems to be a rule or a sin bin, or something needs to be brought in because it's just. You know, we want to see goals in games more than anything else. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's great seeing, you know, 30 points to 29 points in a game. But Jesus, there's nothing beats, you know, a crack and finish, like, say, Richie Hogan's goal, whereas Garage could have dry hit, you know, pulled him down, or which we wouldn't see these moments of absolute brilliance or even, yeah. even TJ's finish. You know what I mean? If, you know, TJ would have finished the penalty more than likely. But if, if Joseph Coney did actually just rubby tackle him and drag him to the ground as well, we don't want to see that in, in the game either, you know, but. No. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. I'm glad you cleared that up anyway. And my deepest apologies to Fergal Horgan during the week. Fair, fair play to me, got that one spot on anyway. And there was me calling for Hugh Lawler's red card, and you know we're, we'd be in the Ireland semi final now. But obviously I'm uh, blatantly God wrong God. there, so it's, it's good to know. Yeah. So um, look, with that, I suppose that's kind of the that's kind of the, the stats we had done up, and I suppose how we saw the game from from our vantage point, you know. Um, only not 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 long not long to go till till we we're, we're out again. So hopefully, as I say, we'll 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 have a preview of the chip game and we'll get hopefully we'll have a guest on. It's proven more difficult than you might think over the last couple of weeks. It's not it's, it's not for the the one to try that we we haven't had a lot on because uh, I'm, I'm sure you're fairly sick, sick of the two of us now for the, for the last couple of weeks. But um, hopefully now later in the week for our junkies caught working nights. So he's um he's he's having a rough time with it at the minute. He's he's saying but um. <laughs> We, 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 he might join us again before the years out as well. But um, look, at, we'll leave, we'll leave there, David. That's um, we've mulled over it long enough. We'll, we'll have to start looking looking forward and looking more positive from here on. You know, <laughs> some lads will tell me I'm very negative out there. There, like I got caught when I said I was disappointed with the tip draw, but. Just to clarify as well, while we're doing just clarifications, that's because Limerick are coming down the tracks and I'm just worried about the two-week gap. And I thought Clare might have, we might have got over the line, possibly a Clare in 60 minutes have been able to withdraw a few heavy hitters. But pass. it's obviously not going to be the case against Tip and we'll be lucky to come away with a, a one-point win, a, a one win. So, yeah, that's the that's the story, Patrick. It's another another... Not too long away. It could be our last episode, or not, that won't be second last episode if things don't go our way. But you have to, we have to stay positive in that sense. That's it. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be here right up to Christmas, please, God. That's, that's the hope, anyhow. But, um, yeah, yeah. no, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there for tonight. And, uh, we'll wish you again in a couple of days. So, hope you enjoy this and make sure to like and subscribe to both the YouTube channel and to the social media pages and spread the word. And we'll try, um, keep it rolling for another few weeks, please, God. So, um, Chat to you again in a couple of days.